This is a poem um, by a man called Kerry Featherstone, who we had the pleasure of uh, seeing in person last night. He's a poet who's really involved in many different projects, um, also writing and working with people from and refugees from Afghanistan, and this poem uh, deals with that. It's called Notes from the Dividing Line. At the, oh, I can't really see them. Okay, I'll do it this way. At the edge of everything, a sniper, hidden behind old ironwork, lines up his shot. In this country, the days lie heavy. We wait for dark. In the evening, we cry around braziers and stamp our feet. Somebody's careful aim between fires and smoke from a balcony in a single moment. And a figure starts to turn slowly along the axis of the earth and falls, his lips facing away from his death. Then I hear the cracking sound. The guts of one man lie dirty, and the shoulder of another turns away deep in grief again. I've tried to send you a sketch of this, but the outline, like a pilot's false horizon, twists. It was supposed to be clear. That's how it is at the edges. The days are heavy, but they do not last. Uh, I'm going to read two kind of short pieces by myself. <laughs> um, this one is called Years. This was their mother's apartment. A painting from Ethiopia is on the wall, brought back by her husband during his trip to Africa, selling toothpaste, hit by a car a few years later. In their mother's kitchen, there are half-peeled garlic cloves, turgid coconut water in the fridge. Her sons are getting drunk for her. I go to her bathroom and can't help but think that I'm sitting on a dead woman's toilet. She was only 69. It's so sad, someone said so young. That's long enough, said another. And I thought about my grandmother, Angelina, who stood bent over her cane she named Moses in her basement in Queens and told me she didn't want to live anymore. I want to believe that I will never feel that. I will do leg squats in the hallway for strength. I will read out loud to keep my wits about me. I will quiz you in math to keep your wits about you. I will eat a new kind of fruit as often as possible. I will learn how to use a wireless hand drill. I will not be afraid of swimming in the dark green lake like Penny the painter, the next door neighbor who has been old forever her head like white moss under the frigid surface. I will look good with white hair. I will get a rush in my chest when bats flutter close. Be there with me. Wake me with pears as you do now. Mm. Uh, this is called What I Should Have Done. I should have dated your dad. <laughs> Andre, the Russian artist who makes ceramic lobster lampshades under the thick of his stately mustache. Instead of me making mediocre love with you in your hammock, I could have been mingling at New York art shows with your dad. I could have been barbecuing with your dad, who once, having discovered I was vegetarian, thoughtfully heated a block of tofu on the grill with a slab of cheese. Your dad, 
who once, after you and I came home from our sushi dinner, looked up from his painting, a portrait of a nude, gazed at me in my long orange dress, and simply demanded, turn. So I spun for him, like some entranced Russian nutcracker, but you never said a damn thing about my long orange dress. I should have dated your dad. <laughs> and maybe, in another life, I do. And we walk home together from the organic supermarket where we buy expensive olive oil. His hand slipped into my back pocket. Thanks.